watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 179, Bootstrap Date Picker, Part 2. He shoots, he scores. Okay, uh, just that quick public service announcement I've, I've been doing for a little bit. Uh, I just want to let you know that I'm changing my hosting providers a little bit, and I'm going to try to go uh, YouTube only because YouTube is free. Uh, but uh, that has the uh, kind of sucky uh, effect that's going to break uh, my iTunes feed and um, uh, maybe some of your RSS feeds if you've been subscribing. I mean, I'm still going to have the RSS feed in, in my blog, but I don't know if the video is going to come through uh, from that. I haven't quite figured that out yet, uh, so that may be a problem. Um, but there are a lot of uh, links on how to download directly from YouTube, and uh, maybe I'll even try to do a show on that or once I figure it out myself. Um, but that's the plan um, to do that. So um, just be advised of that change is, is coming at some point. I'm not quite sure when. Okay, a huge congratulations. There's a very rare event that it's, that's occurred now in Notes 9, and that is uh, Mr. Jardine, John Jardine, IBM champion, has scored a hat trick. That's right, he has done three videos in a row. Uh, I think that may have happened once before. I'd have to actually go back and check, uh, but it's a very rare event that, uh, and, and actually it's called, it's a natural hat track because it's, there's three in a row um, with, with no one in between. And, and stuff like that so again very rare feat indeed and i want to thank john for coming on and, and doing this i know we already have some other shows lined up hopefully i'll get a couple out and in, in, in between um to break it up a little bit but uh john is just um a great friend he's a great contributor to notes and nine and he's a great contributor to the community um so and here's his slide right here uh this is why he's an ibm champion because he he shares and, and gives content and i appreciate all the efforts that he gives. John is actually probably, of, of all my contributors, and I've got a lot of great contributors, he is probably the only one that I would publish a show unseen. Um, he gives he gives it to me, and, and I would just, I do watch it because I want to learn myself, but I would just publish it without being seen, without any reservations. Uh, so again, thanks, John, for coming on the show and doing that. Uh, he's also a, a great trainer and mentor, um, so if you do have X pages or mobile development needs or accelerator needs, uh, give him a call, and I'm sure he can uh, help you out. Okay, in this show, he's going to finish his uh, the second of two parts on on integrating an, uh, a bootstrap date picker into your application. So with that being said, let's go to the demo. Welcome everyone to part two of including a bootstrap date picker in your XPages application. I'm John Jodine and today I'm going to show you how to take the uh, date picker we created in part one of this tutorial and enhance it so that it becomes an inline picker on your XPage versus a pop-up. Uh, the reason why we would do this is to provide a better user experience for those who would access your X page on uh, mobile browsers. For those of you who haven't seen part one as yet, uh, I would highly recommend it because we kick off this video uh, pretty much where we left off on the, on, you know, on the previous video in part one. So uh, I will be posting links to this video and other resources uh, on my blog post that will have this video. So let's give a quick example of what I am referring to with an inline date picker. If we go over here, this is where we left off in the previous video. We compared the standard date picker with uh, the dojo and then finally we implemented the bootstrap date picker in our XPages application. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take this pop-up and we're going to embed it into your XPage so that it becomes an inline date picker where users via smartphones uh, will, will be able to ease uh, will select date values in an easier fashion than what it would be to to use pop-ups because pop-ups are frowned upon uh, when it comes to mobile browsers uh, results may vary most of the time okay so if we go to the site that makes this all happen this is the site that we referenced in part one where we can go and set up our date picker and also download the necessary files. In this video, we don't need to download or install anything. All we need to do is uh, get the necessary code snippet from this um, dashboard, and it will give us what we need in order to apply the inline date uh, picker. So you'll first things first on top, the, in the part one, we use the text input, but over here, we're gonna change it to embedded inline. And you'll see at the bottom, it's already showing an inline date. A uh, couple of properties I just want to make note of. Firstly, 
we don't need the auto close anymore so we can deselect that um if you still have it there it's not really going to do anything wrong it's just not going to it doesn't work with an inline date picker the other thing that i want us to do is if someone now goes and selects a value on the inline date picker they don't have the ability to deselect it they'd have to refresh the entire page or start over uh, so what we need to do over here is give them the ability to toggle uh, the active state of a certain date in the inline picker so by selecting that option they can now select a date and deselect it as well and because we want to give them the best experience possible uh, we can also go and enable a clear button in the event they can't find the, the date that they selected, they can always just go and click on clear, uh, which will reset the, the inline date picker. So there's our code now for, for this. And you'll notice we're not using an input box anymore or an input tag. Uh, this will just be a div. To save a bit of time, I've already created most of this code. So what I'd like to do is just jump over here and say, fine, this is the div uh, that we're going to create inside our X page and you'll see that I'm, I've got a class of date picker inline that we'll be referencing for this. All right, so going to our code, we can go to the date picker custom control. This is the same custom control that we used in, our, in the previous video and we're just going to go and say, yeah, bootstrap date picker inline and inside this uh, data table tag we're just going to go and paste that div with the style class of date picker inline um, in case no one in case you don't remember the first day the bootstrap date picker just had a style class of date picker all right so now we have one called date picker inline so now that we've got that div we also need to write um, enhance the script block or add code to the script block where it's currently only focusing on the date picker, we need to go and add a bit of code over here that will work with the div tag we just created. And that is, that is this code over here, which I've just slightly modified to work with our environment, and that's what you're seeing on top here. So we're just going to copy that, and we're going to go and paste it into our script block. There we go. So you can see I'm referencing date picker inline style class, and I've still got the format it's got the auto close. It's got the. Oh, uh, we don't need the auto close. My bad. Um, it's got the clear button, today highlight, and the today button. So there we go. There's our date picker inline. And if I save this now and go to our X page and click on refresh, there we go. We've got our inline date picker. So this, uh, yeah, pretty easy enough to work. Don't see any problems over here. I just want to pinpoint one or two more things that will uh, that will assist with uh, when you're using an inline date picker. Because we haven't got it bound to a physical input control, we need a means of storing the data or storing the value that the user will select. You might also want to default the value uh, when you open up the X page so that let's say the 13th is already selected uh, versus just a blank uh, inline picker now. So I'd like to just quickly take a minute and show you how to how to apply those two rules so if we go to the code over here you'll see I've got some attribute tags that I want to add to my div tag so if we go over here so within the div tag that we created for date picker inline I'm just going to go and add an attribute of data date and pass the value of I said the 13 so we'll say over there 13 if we save this now and go and preview the date picker, that, that is how we set our default value. So I think from here, I'm sure you all can agree with me, this can become a view scope variable. You can compute this, you can do what you need to do so that the default value is populated over here. So that's, that's the one out of the way. The other one is what happens when a user selects a new value because we haven't assigned it to an input control, how do we get a handle on that value? All right, so it's also not difficult at all. Um, there is a piece of code that you will run in the script block that creates an on change date event listener and allows you to handle that uh, change. So if we go over here to our code and we go to the script block, yeah, at the bottom, we are referencing date picker inline, our div tag, and we are creating a change date event listener against that uh, div. And what we're going to do for now is we're just going to log 
uh, to the console on Firebug, in my case, the, the, the get formatted date, in other words, return the value and just say the new date is equal to this. So if we just save this quickly, go back to um, Firefox, I'm going to open up Firebug, and if I refresh this, and I select a date, you'll see that it's now posting the new date value. All right, so that's exactly what we're looking for. This is obviously client-side JavaScript. From here, there are many paths one could take in order to get that value stored into, a view, into your uh, ViewScope uh, variable or anything that you are using, whether it be a managed bean. But yes, I think you've got, you, you now have a end-to-end -end, uh, working solution for an inline date picker and you've just enhanced the experience when it comes to accessing your X page on mobile uh, browsers. So I hope, yeah, uh, that's about it for me. I hope this was enjoyable for everyone. I'd love to hear everyone's opinions on uh, the Bootstrap date picker and what you're currently using on your site. But yeah, until next time, enjoy. And that's the demo. Uh, again, I, I can't thank John enough for coming on the show with these uh, for these last three episodes. Um, if you have any questions for me, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.